Hi friends, here is Lucas. This is a free lesson from my best-selling course about Kotlin coroutines and flow for Android development. You can find the link in the description to get the course for a nice discount. The terminal operator that we now cover in this lesson is called launch in, and this one is quite different to the others. I prepared a new playground file in which I already created a new flow, which does the same as the flow in the previous video. Namely, it emits the value 1 after 100 milliseconds and the value 2 after 200 milliseconds. Let's just directly call the launch in terminal operator on our flow and open up its documentation. There, in the function definition, you can see that in contrast to the other terminal operators, launch in is not a suspend function, but a regular one, since there is no suspend keyword in front of the function. In the last lesson, I told you something that is not fully true. There I said that every terminal operator needs to be a suspend function because then it needs to be called from a coroutine. And the flow builder code is then executed in this coroutine and so it is able to call suspend functions like emit by itself. However, launch in is an exception since it is not a suspend function. Therefore, here we don't need to start a new coroutine before calling it, but instead as you can see in the function definition, we need to pass a coroutine scope. So let's just create a new coroutine scope with an empty context. And then let's pass this scope to launch in. Passing a scope enables the launch in function to internally start a new coroutine in this scope and then collect from the flow. And that's the reason why the launch in operator doesn't need to be a suspend function. It is because we need to pass a scope and then internally the launch in function starts a new coroutine and then collects from the flow. If we go into the function implementation of launch in, you can see that what I just said is actually correct because launch in launches a new coroutine on the scope that we pass and then collects from the flow. So launch in is basically just a shortcut for scope.launch and then collect from the flow in the coroutine. Now we have a basic idea about the launch in operator, but how can we actually perform operations for every emitted item now. With collect, it's easy. We can simply pass a lambda block there. So let's print out whenever we receive a new item. However, when we take a look at the function definition of launch in again, you can see that we can't pass a lambda block to it, but only a coroutine scope. So how can we perform operations for every emission in this case? Well, we need to use a new operator for that. And this one is the onEach operator. onEach is a simple operator that can be called on the flow. And it has access to the emitted item and can perform a given action. Let's simply print out the emitted item in the on each operator. Let's now add a thread.sleep call in the end so that this main function doesn't shut down before the flows in the coroutines get collected. And when we now run this code, You can see that launch in and collect behave in a similar way. 
both trigger the flow to emit values. So emitting first value is printed out twice and both also receive the emitted values and print them out. So received one in collect is printed out and received one with launch in is also printed out. And the same thing happens with the second value. Subscribing to a flow is a little bit more readable with launch in than with collect, since there's only one level of nesting. However, launch in does not only provide some syntactic sugar for us. There is also a subtle difference in behavior between launch in and collect that you should be aware of. As mentioned before, launch in is a regular function and not a suspend function. And therefore, it doesn't suspend the coroutine in which it is called until the flow has completed. On the other hand, collect is a suspend function and will suspend the coroutine until the flow has completed. So if we comment out the collect section and use a second launch in construct after the first one and also adjust the print statements a little bit so that we know which launch in construct received the value and then execute this code again. You can see that the two flows are collected concurrently because the first emission is printed out twice at the beginning and then the first emission is received by both launch in constructs and then the second emissions happen at the same time and then the second emission is printed out in both constructs. On the other hand, if we now comment out the two launch in constructs and instead collect the flow twice by using the collect terminal operator after one another. And also adjust the print statements again so we can differentiate the two collect calls. And then execute the code again. Then the flows are collected sequentially. So the first item of the flow is emitted in the beginning and printed out by the collect lambda. And then the second item of the first flow is emitted and printed out. And only when the first flow has completed does the second flow start to emit values. As mentioned earlier, this is because collect suspends its coroutine until the flow completes. Only then can the coroutine resume and start collection on the second flow. And that explains the sequential nature of execution here. So here we only launch a single coroutine and then collect from the flow sequentially. In the launch in example before, we actually launched two coroutines and these coroutines then were executed concurrently. In most use cases, you probably want to collect flows concurrently. So you will probably end up using launch in much more often than collect. So if you want to dive deeper into coroutines and flow, then I can highly recommend my complete course that contains everything to fully understand and successfully use coroutines and flow in your apps. We will together create a stock live tracking app that uses flow extensively. You will also learn about state flows, shared flows, channels, and many, many other topics. You can find a link to the course in the description and I would love to have you on board.